Hello, in this lecture we're going to record the merchandising transactions from the standpoint of the purchaser recording the debits and credits related to the process. First thing that will happen will be the purchase order. So the purchaser will say that they need more inventory. They're going to request that inventory, in this case being ink. So they're going to buy the ink from the vendor and then they're going to sell that ink at a later time, meaning they're making a bulk purchase. That generally happens with a purchase order. When the purchase order goes out, note that there is actually no journal entry. Why? Because nothing has been received and no form of payment has happened at that point in time, unlike what might be the case if we were to purchase something on, say, Amazon or something, where we have the form of payment in the term of a credit card at that point in time. In this case, that's not the case. We're just requesting how many units we need and therefore no form of payment has happened. No journal entry then happens at that time period. Then what's going to happen is the ink will then arrive. So from the standpoint of the purchaser, we have the ink at that point in time. Therefore, we're going to say that the ink is going to go on the books. What we need to put it on the books for will be the cost of it. So this is an important point. It seems obvious, but later on we'll run into problems because we need to be able to convert from units to dollars. When we purchase the ink, not as much of a problem at that point because we know exactly what we purchased it for, in this case, 6,500. So we're gonna record the inventory for that amount, 6,500, not for units of inventory. Although we will track the inventory, we'll talk about how to do that at a later point. We're also gonna record the fact that we have the accounts payable at this point in time. When we got the ink, probably came with a bill. We matched the bill to the purchase order to see that we got what we were expecting to get. And now we can record the fact that we owe this money for the inventory that we have received. Let's take a look at the debits and credits. So the debits and credits, we're going to record the journal entry up here on the left hand side on the trial balance just to see what the impact will be on the trial balance accounts. What's going to happen first is we're going to say we got that inventory. Inventory is a debit balance account. We need to make it go up. We're going to make it go up by the dollar amount, of course, that we paid for the inventory. So we're going to debit inventory for the 6,500. If we post that out, we previously had 5,000. We're doing the same thing to it, a debit of 6,500, bringing the balance to 11,500. Then we haven't yet paid for it with cash. The credit will then go to accounts payable. That's the IOU for the same amount, 6,500. We have zero in accounts payable. It's a credit balance account, however, and it's gonna go up in the credit direction to the credit of 6,500. If we look at the accounting equation, we can see that assets are going up, liabilities are going up, and there's no effect on the income statement. Nothing happened in terms of revenue and expenses at the time of purchase of the inventory. It will be affected when we sell the inventory. So here's the effect on net income, no effect on net income, all other accounts being pulled over at this time. Next thing that's gonna happen, we now owe, the purchaser now owes, of course, the money for the inventory that has been received. At some point in the future, that money will then be paid. We now know what that amount will be, 6,500. Therefore, journal entry, cash is gonna go down by that 6,500. And the accounts payable, the IOU, what we owe, is gonna go down by the 6,500. Let's take a look at that journal entry up on the left-hand side. We're gonna post it to the trial balance on the right-hand side where we now have that inventory of 11,500 and that payable of 6,500 credits. So what we're gonna say now is cash is gonna go down. Therefore, cash has a 120,000 in it. We're gonna do the opposite thing to it, crediting it. I'm gonna think about cash first all the time because it's gonna be the easiest way to know if it's gonna be a debit or credit. If we post that out, we're going from 120,000 to a credit of 65 to uh, 113 500. The debit will then be reducing the accounts payable account. So we've got the accounts payable, it's going to be the debit. We have 6,500 credit in it. We're going to do the opposite thing to it, which will be that debit bringing the balance back down to zero. So we have assets going down for the cash decreasing. We've got the accounts payable going down in terms of liabilities going down, and the equity section will remain the same. Here's the summary. Notice that there's no effect on net income for the purchasing transaction, either when we get the inventory or when we pay for the inventory. When will it have an impact on net income? On the income statement. When we sell it in the form of cost of goods sold and sales.